worship here at Newcastle United. We're glad you're with us. Whether you're with us in person or online, live on Zoom, or whether you're watching us later on YouTube, all are welcome and we're glad to be gathered here together. And we gather on the traditional lands of the Chippewa and Mississauga of this area, and we remember that we are all God's people. So let us enter into worship more deeply as we hear our prayer. Just a reminder that next week 
think is the last Sunday of the month. I did notice that someone's already brought theirs in for this month. If you are involved in Bible study and have not yet picked up your Bible study book, please see me by next Sunday. And you can uh, get your book so you're ready to go in the fall. Crafters United and their Snowflake Bazaar, November 19th. All these things to put on your calendar. There is a volunteer opportunity. And after worship, Ken and I are going to actually print some things out and put them on bulletin boards. But we're looking for a children and youth program coordinator. And uh, if you're interested or know somebody who might be, please get that information and pass it along. There's also a financial update from the official board. Thank you for those who continue to donate. Reminder about being sent and not free and that we have a YouTube channel. That's everything I have. Did I miss anything? You can read at your leisure because there's a lot of it. As we begin our worship together, in a world that is constantly changing, constantly seeming to be in confusion, we need that unwavering light to hold us in place. In the midst of train change and transition, a light to show us the way is what we need. May the light of Christ be that for each and every one of us, and may it shine in our hearts to lead others.
Sounds good.
nowadays, you just aren't sure. Luckily, I don't have to get down quite so close to the mic as poor Mike does. Our gospel lesson comes from Luke's gospel. Religious communities then, as now, had a distinctive way of praying. We dress God personally, often as Father. God is caring, gracious, and a loving parent. The church has come to use Matthew's version of the Lord's Prayer most often, but some early Christians used what we find today in Luke. He was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him after midnight and you say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. For everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give it a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. And our hymn is number 402, We Are One. We 
No, be honest about what you really feel. God gets it. It's okay to use those words that you might not want everybody else to hear. God can take it. But what's even more important about prayer is that it's a dialogue. Now, I don't know if that's a new concept to anybody or not, but prayer is a dialogue. It's not just you talking. It's you also listening so God has time to talk. Some of us have trouble with that. Some of us just need to get it out and we just keep going, amen, and we walk away. differently 
when somebody's watching. You know what I'm talking about. Help us not come into time of trial. If you have a companion walking with you, it's much easier to avoid that trial and that temptation. Bread and a companion. That's what we're praying for. You can start a prayer, dear God, Loving God, I try to come up with creative ways every Sunday in the bulletin. Loving God, gracious God, dear God, just God. Or you can just start talking. And God is always listening. That constant companion is right there with us to hear what we have to say and what we need to say. We had what was supposed to have been our outdoor service in June, but it turned out to be an indoor service. Because God was listening to prayers, and sometimes God has a sense of humor. And what we did that day was to take our rocks, and we wrote a word on those rocks, and we placed those words together. But what we wanted our community to be how we wanted to be, what we wanted to be, how we wanted other people to see us. And as we set those rocks into place, it was a prayer. A prayer that those very things we were offering to God, that we wanted for our community, were the things that God would walk with us to help us do. I have more stones if anybody has more dreams and hopes for this community, and we can always add to the list. But it's about the prayer. Be with us. Walk with us as our companion. Please ensure we have everything we need. That's what daily bread meant. Just simply having what we need, not what we want, what we need, each and every day. How you pray? You stop. And you take a moment to remember who's walking with you. That unseen companion. And you have a conversation. However you normally talk, that's an okay way to pray. And if you don't know what to pray, and you just need that connection, Jesus taught his disciples, and therefore us, how to pray. What you could pray. So when you're at a loss for your own words, use Jesus' words. But as you pray, remember this is conversation with God. So take a breath. God has something to say. Amen. And we do receive our daily bread. We do receive many blessings. God. A prayer of thanks is often a good idea when we stop and think about all that we have. Prayer in action is giving some of those blessings back to ensure that God's work is for all God's people here and everywhere. And so we celebrate that we are able to offer ourselves and all we have to God's work. And so we can.
my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. By remembering Jesus in this way now, we claim our common heritage as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of the Holy Church. Gather into one all who share these holy mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Christ Jesus. These and all our prayers for those near and far in your presence this day. We ask that your presence be upon them, and upon we who gather together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus Christ, broken to become the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the cup of blessing, poured out for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And we come together and take that table. So I invite you to partake of the bread of life. And to partake together the cup of blessing. Let us join in our prayer after communion is found in our bulletins. Gracious God, may your gifts of love transform and enliven us that we may live lives of thanksgiving. May your presence among us provoke such longing for your bread that we will never be satisfied until the whole earth knows your justice, your peace, and your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Those prepackaged elements are very convenient, but it sounds like a large number of, remember older ladies who always carried those hard candies that were wrapped up in their purses? <laughs> Somehow it takes away a little bit from the <laughs> Our closing hymn, Deep in Our Hearts.
mind the actions. May you offer a prayer each and every day. And the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep each one of you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Oh! 